Hi, my name is Jeff Jacobson from the Tattershall School of Defense, and I had some requests for class notes on a course I taught at SoCal Sword Fight 2013 on the art of Joachim Meyer's rapier from 1570. It's a German treatise, and the reference for this material is Jeffrey Forgang's translation that was published by Greenhill Publishing. The video that we're going to present is going to cover the basic stance and guards, the description of cuts and thrusts, and a couple of plays that tie everything together with some of the handwork, like winding and striking out with the blade, slicing away and setting off. So we hope to inform you of these, and hopefully this video will help those who are working on them, their own interpretations of what we're doing. Okay, so we're going to go over the general stance and guards for Meyer's system. A couple of generalities to keep in mind. Uh, I don't think that Meyer is very hardcore specific on any of these things. He's very broad in a lot of his concepts. So he wants you to take this toolbox that he's giving you and sort of open it up so that you can be more creative and clever and less predictable with your actions. But especially for the newer fencer, there's a lot of, there's a few generalities to keep in mind while you're working through learning and understanding the system. The first thing that we're going to talk about is always to stay on the balls of your feet. We don't want to be clomping around on our heels. We still want to be standing upright or, or moving in kind of a shoddy manner. We want to stay on the balls of our feet, loose with our knees bent. Um, the other is that our weight is primarily going to be forwards on the forward leg. We don't want to be leaning backwards and trying to provide these very strong thrusts and winding actions. We're very rarely, if ever, going to lean backwards. And the third is that we're almost always going to have our right foot or our sword foot forwards. Uh, it's going to be very rare that you're going to pass. You're certainly never going to stand in guard with the left foot forwards. Even if you step outwards with the left foot and then pass with the right foot, uh, you're going to come back to that right foot forwards or sword foot forwards guard very quickly. We don't want to stand or be settled in a guard position with our left foot forwards when we're using a, a single rapier. It's not really the most effective thing to be use, utilizing. So our stance, our general stance, leans forward onto the right foot. Our head is, our head is in line. And generally your shoulder is in line with the front knee. Uh, from a side view, you see the profile, the shoulder and the knees are kind of in line on the front foot. We're leaning forward onto the right ball of the foot and the sword is going to transition between the various guards from here. We're not uber extended and way out with our weight because we can't really move from there. We want to be nice and fluid and in motion throughout the whole process. So we have our basic stance which is forward leaning forward on the right knee. We have our fun, our primary guard or one of our primary guards which is the middle guard also known as iron gate. The sword sits in the middle and the, the tip points generally at our opponent's chin. If you take this guard and you move it to the right, this would be what Meyer would call the middle guard on the right. And if we move it to the left, this would be the middle guard on the left. It's pretty simple. If we take this sword and we lift it above our head, we have the high guard. The high guard is in the middle. This is the high guard if it's on the right. This is high guard on the right. And this is high guard on the left. The sword is on our left hand side. There's one more caveat with the high guard. If the point is backwards, this is high guard for the stroke. And if we take that point and aim it towards our opponent, this is high guard for the thrust on the right. And Meyer tends to call this guard ox. So this is the right ox. And if we shift over to the left side, this is the left ox. Right. So we have the middle guard, which sometimes he calls iron gate. We now have right and left middle guard. We have the high guard. We have right and left high guard. And we have ox on the left, ox on the right, 
And the final guards are down low. So if the sword is low, if the sword point is low, this is called the low guard. And if it is on the right, it is called low guard on the right. And if it is on the left, then it is called low guard on the left. So if I'm standing now in my guard, here is the iron gate, right and left. We have the high guard with the sword forward, high guard right and left, ox on the right, ox on the left, and the low guard on the left, low guard on the right, and generic low guard. So any position that you find yourself in, whether your hand is vertical or horizontal, it doesn't really matter, you're in one of those basic guards. Um, there's two additional guards that Meyer leads us through that he uses. Uh, one is a very important guard, and that is called the guard of long point. And long point looks like a middle guard, but it is well extended. So if you're extended and forwards, you're in long point. Uh, long point can be done either vertically or it can be changed vertically so you can either have the edge down or the edge up depending on which long point you kind of end up in all those are still long point Meyer essentially defines long point as the end of any thrust so if you're standing in the middle guard and you thrust you should end up in long point Uh, the final guard that he covers later in the text is the guard of the plow. And in the plow, you actually take your whole hand and shift it a little bit, putting your thumb on the flat of the blade and your quillins horizontal to the ground. And this gives you strength in the flat of the sword and will allow you to use the flat to make cuts and deflections as well as control your edges for thrusts and cuts. So those are the all of the guards of Meyer's system that you basically need to know. We're not going to use the plow in this video, but uh, hopefully it'll serve you later on. But that concept of putting your thumb on the blade and being able to shift your hand to that actually will come in handy towards the end of our work. So keep those in mind and get some good practice with those basic cards.